and David Lemieux International Media Conference Call. My name is Jenny and I'll be your operator for today's call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session. During the question and answer session, if you have a question, please press star then one on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I will now turn the call over to Oscar De La Hoya. You may begin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you to the uh, media for joining us today in this uh, international uh, media conference call for Sounders versus Lemieux. Um, we are kicking off uh, Fight Week with this call and have uh, a, a week of events leading up to Saturday's event, <clears throat> which will uh, surely be a showdown between two heavy hitters. Uh, this Saturday, December 16th, at the brand-new uh, place bell in uh, Laval, Quebec, uh, Canada. Uh, WBO middleweight world champion uh, Billy Joe Saunders will battle uh, the uh, heavy-handed David Lemieux in a 12-round fight for Saunders' uh, title, uh, which is the WBO title. Um, and this event is presented by uh, Golden Boy Promotions and I of the Tiger Management in, in association with uh, my partner Frank Warren. Um, <clears throat> additionally, we have a uh, spectacular uh, co-main event as part of the HBO uh, telecast, uh, Antoine Action uh, Douglas uh, uh, versus uh, Gary Spike O'Sullivan um, uh, will be a 10-round uh, fight for the WBO International Middleweight title represented by Golden Boy Promotions, Eye of the Tiger Management, and in association with uh, GH3 Promotions and Murphy's Boxing. And opening up uh, the HBO telecast, uh, we will have uh, 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 Cletus, uh Hebrew Hammer uh, uh, Salden uh, returning to the ring just uh, uh, more than a month after dominating knockout victory. Uh, he's taking on uh, highly regarded uh, Ives Ulises uh, Jr. for it, and that's the uh, a 10 round uh, super lightweight event, uh, and that'll be opening up the telecast on uh, on HBO. Which begins at um, at 9:40 uh, uh, Eastern uh, Pacific time. Uh, tickets for the Sounders uh, Lemieux are, are priced beginning at 45 to uh, all the way up to 500 dollars. They're uh, still for sale. Tickets are going fast. We're going to have a full a full house at the brand new uh, arena. So at this time, uh, it is my pleasure to uh, introduce to you uh, the president uh, uh, of Eye of the Tiger Management. Uh, my good friend and partner uh, at Golden Boy Promotions, uh, Camille, Camille Stefan. Hello, everyone. And we fight week. We're here. We're ready. Uh, this fight is going to be a war. We expect uh, a show that will be talked about for the next decade. Uh, HBO on the card as well. Release from Montreal against Curtis Feldman. Uh, two styles that I think will marry very well. Great fight. And uh, Action Douglas against O'Sullivan. I can't wait to watch the fight myself as a fan. And uh, we thank you for uh, the support, HBO, Golden Boy, um, Frank Warren, everybody's involved. So many promoters, so many people came together to put this great, great event together. Um, Oscar, uh, Eric, and the team. Wonderful job, thank you very much, and we're uh, ready here. We're ready. Yeah. Mm, thank you, thank you very much, Camille. Um, so let me introduce now the uh, the uh, the trainer, uh, the trainer for David the Mew. Um, obviously, he's been doing an amazing, amazing job. They've been uh, training uh, for months now, getting ready for this uh, incredible showdown on December 16th. Uh, here is uh, Mark Ramsey to say a few words. Mark. Are you there, Mark? Hello. Mark, Mark okay. Okay. Mark. Okay. Yeah, if you can say a few words to the media. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, everybody who made that fan uh, happen. Uh, HBO, Golden Boy, 
Camilla Stefan and Eyes of Tigers Management, Frank Warren. Um, I imposed to David Lemieux the couple of last week a very, very tough training camp, but a very successful training camp where we reach every single objective that we fixed before the training camp. And uh, I'm very uh, enthusiastic about uh, the, the performance of David uh, Saturday night and a very nice victory just before Christmas for, for our fans here in Montreal. Thank you, thank you very much. <clears throat> so now it's uh, my pleasure uh, to introduce to you uh, Canada's biggest star. Uh, he's a former IBF middleweight uh, world champion. He has a stellar, uh, a stellar red of eight wins with three losses and 33 knockouts. Um, you know, David is a he's a he's a thunderous puncher with tremendous, tremendous power in both hands. Uh, like I said, captured the uh, IBF. Uh, World middleweight uh, title um, against uh, Hassan Andam in 2015, uh, uh, knocking the uh, then world title holder uh, four times en route to a, a decision victory. Um, this year, uh, Lemieux uh, blasted out title contender Curtis uh, uh, Stevens in a third round uh, impressive knockout, which is a uh, which uh, 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 a contender for. Uh, for the uh, fight of the year, and then also uh, uh, he went on to beat uh, Marcos uh, Dorado Reyes. And so now on Saturday, he's, um, he's up against uh, another tough uh, challenge in, in, in world champion uh, Billy Joe Sounder, and that will be for the WBO middleweight title. So it is my pleasure to introduce to you uh, uh, from Canada, uh, David Lemieux. Thanks, Oscar. Uh, hi everybody. Um, extremely excited for this week. Very, uh, very grateful for uh, you know for another great opportunity to become world champion again. Um, I'm uh, thankful uh, for for everybody to be part of this. Uh, thanks to Golden Boy, the promotions, uh, Iowa Tiger Management, um, HBO, and uh, and everybody around. Thank you guys. It's been uh, it's been a great camp. Uh, I'm extremely I'm extremely excited for this fight. You know, um, I'm more excited actually just to lay my hands on uh, Billy Joe Saunders more than more than anything else. He's got a he's got a big mouth. It's, uh, it's rare I see fighters with such a big mouth. I just hope he has. His fighting, his fighting is gonna come as close as his uh, mouth is on Saturday night. So uh, you know he has he has a very very aggressive Lemieux on on his back, and I'm and I'm extremely ready. I'm mean, extremely prepared um, for this fight. Uh, it's not gonna be easy for him. It's uh, it's actually gonna be hard for him. I'm here to knock him out. I'm here to destroy him every round. If he goes 12 rounds, well, it's unfortunate for him, but I'm ready for for 12 big rounds. So uh, I'm extremely excited for this fight. Give the fans uh, their money's worth and uh, finish the year with a new uh, WBO world title. All right. Thank you, thank you, David. Uh, do we have uh, Team Sounders on? Yeah, ready to rock and roll. All right, all right. Um, it is my pleasure now uh, to introduce to you the man behind uh, the WBO World Champion. Uh, obviously, when you have a, a world champion uh, like Sounders, uh, you need a you need a great trainer. And so it is my pleasure to introduce to you Dominic Dominic Ingle. Dominic. No, this is Billy Joe. Dominic, this is Beyonce. The champ here, just the champ alone. Okay, all right. So let me, uh, let me. Uh, it is my pleasure to uh, introduce to you, um, um, hailing out of uh, Hatfield, uh, United Kingdom. Uh, Sounders is undefeated, um, coming off uh, back-to-back defenses. Uh, he is the WBO uh, world champion. Um, he, he demolished uh, 
uh, Irish Andy Lee in, in 2015. Um, he, uh, he is, uh, the WBO, uh, middleweight, uh, uh, champion, uh, fighting the likes of, uh, Willie the Mongoose, uh, Monroe. And, uh, on Saturday night, um, you know, he's looking to, uh, looking to stay undefeated and, uh, he's ready. Uh, he trained hard for this fight, so it is my pleasure to introduce the WBO middleweight champion, uh, Billy Joe Saunders. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello? You want to talk about how training camp was? Training camp has been very, very good. Um, all come to an end now. Lovely, beautiful, white sun. Fitness is done. Feeling in the best shape ever. No excuses. Um, don't hear no excuses from the other camp about recent injuries and whatnot else. It's going to be a very, very good fight. I think um, Saber's a good fighter, but um, at the minute he's just being used a bit as uh, a bit of the last bit of dog meat for me because um, you know I don't keep wanting gloss and dog meat. I want the dog himself. Um, and I know me just giving David a bit of a beating will also um, set that big fight out for me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, we will now open it up for questions from the media. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. If you have a question, please press star then one on your touchtone phone. If you wish to be removed from the queue, please press the pound sign or the hash key. If you are using a speakerphone, you may need to pick up the handset first before pressing the numbers. Once again, if you have a question, please press star then one on your touchtone phone. And our first question comes from Dan Raphael from ESPN. Thank you very much. Hello, David. How are you today? Hey, Dan. Doing great. Uh, it's good to talk to you. Uh, my first question for you is... Uh, uh, I guess this is going to be the first time there's going to be a boxing event in this particular arena that they opened this year in Lavelle. And I'm wondering, just from your perspective, I know you've had a lot of fights in uh, in, in, uh, in Quebec and in uh, Montreal in particular, uh, but what, what would it mean to you to win a world title in front of your hometown uh, the way that you did the first time you won a world title belt? I mean, especially, you know, in a new building and a lot of excitement about the fight. Well, this is going to be a second. Uh, you know, uh, it's been done once. It's going to be done twice. Um I think uh, I think it's, it's going to be a great, uh, great, uh, great night for the fans, and you know what, I, what I'm going to bring to the ring and how I'm going to fight. You know, a lot of people are just talking about my punching power and uh, and this and that, but you know they're going to be surprised once I start mixing out with uh, Saunders uh, in there. It's not just a puncher behind here; it's also you know there's a boxer too. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see how he holds up. When you uh, when you fought Golovkin, you just mentioned in your last uh, fight that was for you know in a world title fight and you lost that fight. What makes you uh, believe that your performance against Saunders is going to be a whole lot different, let's say, than the way it went down against Golovkin? I know that was not your best performance. I'm a whole different guy than uh, than, I, than I am uh, fighting Golovkin. Uh, it's, uh, it's a whole different guy. Uh, you put Golovkin back uh, in front of me now, it's going to be a whole different scenario. But now I've got uh, Saunders to take care of. Um, you know, we've uh, we've done everything we need to do in camp. Uh, I don't think it's going to be very difficult in the in the ring against him. Um, uh, I'm going to be his nightmare, his biggest nightmare, his biggest fight in his career. It's going to be uh, it's going to be help for him. Um, but uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to see that title now. You made it clear, uh, David, in your opening remarks that you don't really seem to have uh, uh, much like for. Poor Billy. Um, I'm wondering where does that come from, if you can just say what, what, what the reason. I mean, you, I've heard you talk before other fights, and, you know, you didn't have that kind of animosity, let's say, towards uh, Gennady Golovkin or, you know, uh, you know, even Curtis Stevens necessarily. Um, what is it about Saunders that really has you going the wrong way? I'm going to make him pay in the ring. All this animosity is going to come out in the ring. If it thinks he can, uh, he can run away for 12 rounds, he's in a lot of trouble. Um, well, was there something he said that got you upset or something he did? Oh, he he says a, a whole bunch of things. It's just his character. His character is he's who he is. I don't like him. He's gonna be. Okay, fair enough. I have a, a question for Billy. If he's there, Billy. 
Snaking. Can you uh, just give me your, your perspective about uh, traveling uh, to your opponent's hometown to defend your title? Your previous uh, world title fights have taken place, uh, you know, in front of the more friendly crowds over in the UK. Um, give me your, your mindset about coming to uh, enemy territory. Listen, I go to enemy, ter- enemy territory all the time. Where I'm from, when I boxed Andy Lee, it was the biggest feud amongst uh, possible gypsy culture, English, Irish, Scottish and Welsh, all there in one mixture. Most of them there for Andy Lee. I mean, I, I perform under pressure. Um, I've seen David's absolute best performance against Danny DeGlockin. I think David's very weak in the mind. Um, and at the end of the day, I don't care if it's in his back garden. In his back garden. Put the ring there. As long as there's a ring there, meaning can get in there, that's what matters. And, um, really? you know, I'm... Uh, I'm quite for now to know that I'm under his skin. I mean, because if he wants to play a boxing match, then bring a blindfold and I'll put it on and I'll beat him. So uh, that's how confident I am. Now, do you have any regard for his punching power? Most people watch David fight, they think, and have seen, uh, like, knockouts he had against Curtis Stevens. And look at David, honestly, as maybe one of the top punchers in the entire sport, regardless of weight class. Do you have a thought about the kind of punching power that he possesses? He's knocking out bums, yeah, knocking out old men. But um, he come unstuck against Rubio, who's a tough man who, who really is power. Um, he lost his neck by out of that. He boxed bums all the way up until um, Golovkin. Uh, Curtis Steven, he's not an A-level fighter. He's just a, he's just a step up, a bit of a teaser for a fighter. He's not really nothing special. He dealt with him, fair play. But then he got, well, he got spanked by Golovkin previously before that. So... You know, I think that when he's mixed it at the very, very best elite, he's come up short, quite comfortable. I mean, he didn't win a round against Golovkin. That's all he kept doing was playing with his air. And so just one more question for you, Billy. Uh, since you're so confident that you're going to win this fight, uh, what kind of big fight in the middleweight division or maybe a different division do you want after this fight? There's obviously uh, the prospect like Canelo, Alvarez, Gennady, Golovkin rematch. There's some other names prowling around in that weight class. Uh, what do you want to do after you uh, say you're going to I, I want, I want whoever next, but I would love to fight like Canelo Alvarez. I would love to fight him. Um, I, I believe that stars make fights. Um, so as long as it's all a fair plan field here in Canada, which I'm sure it will, I don't want no um, Golovkin uh, Canelo results. I want a fair result. If David Lemieux beats me fair and square, I will shake his hand. But when I beat him fair and square, I want him to shake my hand. And uh, rightly so. All right, thank you very much, both of you fellas. Have a great fight Saturday. Thank you for your time. And our next question comes from Keith Eidek, BoxingScene.com. Yes, my question is for Billy. Uh, Billy, just what you just mentioned about going to his, you know, basically his hometown and you want him fair play, how concerned are you about the judging if the fight goes to this one? Oh, listen, I'm not, I'm not concerned at all. Um, you know, with... We've got one Canadian, one English, and one uh, and one other nationality. So it's going to be a, play, a fair playing field. But listen, David's already said that he's going to knock me out, so we don't need judges, do we? Um, he's already put that pressure on himself. He has to come and knock me out. Because if he don't knock me out, there's no way in God's name is he going to win this fight. Because to me, it will be a walking punch bag. Billy, obviously you win this fight, you're in a great position because they haven't made the, the Gennady Golovkin uh, Canelo rematch. How do you feel about possibly getting Canelo, as you just mentioned, uh, if you win this fight? When I win this fight, that's the one I want, Canelo. Um, you know, he, he's a global superstar. He's the one you have to beat to get recognized uh, at the high potential of this game. Um, I would love to work with Oscar De Loya and Frank Warren Promotions to make that fight after, uh, but I will be all up for that fight. In Canelo. And you would obviously have no trouble coming to Las Vegas or somewhere like that based on what you're doing, you know, right? Listen, if I will come to um, Canada to spank David, I will go to, uh, to Las Vegas, Mexico, where they want to be involved in that magnitude of the fight. Because, listen, I'm not, I'm not in it for money. I'm not in it for anything else. I'm in it because I want to be involved in these big fights. And now I've got my, uh, my hand in the whip up. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to make any slip up. So I've got to make sure I'm 100 million percent on Saturday night, which I will be. And David, what is your perspective on that? You know, possibly getting another. If you win this fight, getting another shot at Golovkin, or possibly something can up Phoenix. 
Well, well you know, these are all uh, names that are going to meet uh, sooner or later. So um, I will be prepared uh, once their time comes. Thank you, Bob. Once again, if you have a question, please press star than one on your touch tone phone. And our next question comes from Bill Beacon from the Canadian Press. Yeah, hi, uh, David. I, I just wonder, uh, you're up against a left-hander, uh, unbeaten guy uh, who doesn't have a lot of knockouts on his record. So it, it's, you know, the, the obvious thing would be power against, uh, bu you know, puncher against boxer. Is that the way you see the fight? You know, uh, we've prepared the, we've, we've prepared for many scenarios. I've had uh, multiple uh, foreign partners. We've been uh, we've been uh, training to face. We've been training to to brawl. We've been training for everything. So so that uh, come fight night, there'll be no surprises. Uh, but uh, I have an idea about how he's gonna fight against me, and uh, we've prepared very well for it. So. Um, there's going to be no, no surprises uh, for me. Um, now, are you in regard of in regard of fighting a uh, left left-handed guy? Yeah. I've always done good against left-handed guys. It's not a problem. Are, are you were you inspired at all by Jean Pascal winning his farewell fight? Uh, inspired? Uh, no, but uh, I guess he did good. He did do good. I didn't really see the fight, but uh, congratulations to him. He uh, he got a good fight on his comeback. Thanks. And our next question comes from Gail Falkenthal from Committee Digital. Thank you very much. The first question is for David. David. I'm sure that Saunders points to your record and says, well, he has losses and I don't. However, do you think that those losses give you a level of improvement and learning that somebody with an O on their record doesn't have? In other words, is that an advantage to you? Uh, if you look at those losses, you know, there's really one, only one loss I can really credit. Uh, the, the two losses were early in my career. Um, the first one against Rubio and uh, the one against Austin is very de debatable in my, in my in my eyes. I never, I still don't believe I lost that fight. But you know, uh, the one against Golovkin, you know, I I've, I had my issues uh, right away. The the fight was done and uh, no excuses. I worked my way back up and. Uh, and I'm very confident in uh, in getting those uh, defeats back uh, back uh, on a winning track. So uh, on Saturday, uh, um, the first the first thing to do is to to get that WBO title, and then uh, we'll talk about uh, Golovkin or Canelo or whoever it is. And earlier you were asked about fighting in this new arena in front of the Canadian fans, and I, I think most, many people are surprised how uh, uh, anxious, how avid the Canadian fans are, that there are so many very strong Canadian boxing fans. Why do you think that that is? It doesn't strike people immediately as a country that is very strong with boxing. Uh, you know, we love boxing. We have a lot of good fighters. Um, it's been a very active uh, uh, few, few, few uh, ten years uh, in, in Quebec uh, boxing. So uh, you know, there's been a lot of good good fighters out, out here, and uh, boxing has been very active. Well, they they love it and they show it. A question for you, Billy Joe. You have fought all of your previous professional fights in Great Britain. So for your first fight, you choose to come to Canada. Why was that the choice for your first overseas fight? Because, you know, uh, David's team wouldn't come to England. Um, I wasn't coming to Canada at first, but then if this fight was going to get made, it was going to be after Christmas. So I said, listen, I wanted to be out twice before the, the new year, and twice I will be. So uh, traveling is nothing to me. I am a born traveler. Traveling is nothing to me. I've been boxing all over the world since I've been 16 years of age, from Russia, 
from Australia, from, from Beijing, from you name the countries I've been here. And I know it's only amateur boxing, but I'm still used to travelling and preparing to fight the same nervous system, the same energy, the same sort of energy you need to fight. I've done that before. I've seen David. I've seen David at his very, very best, at his extreme best. And that don't worry me. He has to bring more than that plus again. And uh, like I say, boxing is a, is, a, is a dangerous sport. One punch can change anything. As David says, he's a very, very big puncher. So uh, I have to be uh, on my game. And a final question to the both of you. Are you motivated by the animosity between you? I mean, there's no love lost at all. You, your, your comments no, may have been mild I compared to Twitter. <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know David to hate him. That's all I know he's got short legs. Um, that's all I said he's got short legs and that seems to touch a nervous, you know, the nerve button a bit. But listen, I don't like David. Matter of fact, after I beat him, I'll give him a kiss on the cheek. No problem. Any response David and I'll, I'll end my remarks there. You give him a kiss on the cheek, you're getting knocked out with a hook. <laughs> Ah, for a hook? Okay, I'll watch out for that one, yeah? Huh. Watch out. <laughs> I'll watch out for that hook, no problem, David, yeah? I'll speak to you out the fight about that one. Careful you don't pull that shoulder out as well as you're throwing that hook. What's that? I said be careful you don't strain too hard on your shoulder when you throw that hook, okay? Don't worry about it. Both shoulders are good. Good, Make sure your grand and chin holds up. Good, 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 good. My chin will hold up, I promise you that. That's one thing I will promise you. My chin will definitely hold up. I promise you that. If it don't, you can have my purse. How about that? No problem. Okay, then. I'll keep that in mind <laughs> after the fight. Yeah. <laughs> keep that in mind, because you need it, because you're only getting a small one this time, aren't you? Okay, we've got you in Canada, at least. Yeah, you got me in Canada, no problem. It's At least it's a ring, isn't it? You've got me in Canada. I'll just look at it as a little bit of old advice, smack you up, and then go and do what I've got to do after. So uh, that's all good. Once again, if you have a question, please press star and then one on your touch-tone phone. Next question comes from Keith Idek from BoxingScene.com. Oh, yes, my question is for Billy. Uh, Billy, you just mentioned uh, something about David's shoulder. Do you suspect that he has a shoulder injury, or is that what you're really... (laughs) I don't expect nothing. Listen, we all every fighter's had injuries, isn't they? But some's worse than the others. We see James Bigel last week. He had a shoulder injury, um, and he rushed back too soon. And it was uh, he should have waited a bit longer. But look, the way you got to look at it, I'm sure David's fit, healthy, ready to go because he won't be in the ring if not. And uh, his management team wouldn't be advising him to get in that ring. Well, I would like to hope so. Um, you know, the same as me. If I had an injury, then I wouldn't be here. So we both got to be 100%. So I thank God we're both 100% and we can both go to work on Saturday night. Um, so, yeah, I'm, listen, I'm not open on no disadvantage or advantage for injuries. I'm, I'm hoping to get in there, bring the best out of myself and uh, get the win fairly. Thank you. I have a question for Oscar as well. Oscar, what does it say about Billy Joe that he was willing to come to Canada to fight David in his backyard for this fight? Hi Keith, I think his line might have dropped, so if you have another question for either David or or Billy, um, can you ask those? Okay, no, that's all I have. Thank you, though. Thanks, Keith. And our next question comes from James Slatter from ASAPBoxing.com. Hello, yeah, this is a question for the champion, Billy Joe Saunders. Hello, champ, it's great to speak with you, sir. Um, no matter what no matter what both of you and David say, um, the bad blood element of this fight is a big, big talking point. Uh, you, had a, you had a bad blood fight with Eubank Jr., of course, which you won, uh, and there's still talk about a rematch and various things. Is, 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 this, is this more bad blood in this fight, do you think? Do you see this as more of a, a fight where you dislike your opponent? Listen, like I said earlier on, I don't dislike David. I don't know him to dislike him. I don't really keep track of him, how he goes on and how he don't. That's all I know is that um, 
you know, he said some, uh, he mentioned about putting people in a, uh, in a coffin dead on Twitter. Now, I've only got respect for the boxing world. And, you know, we, we recently lost someone passed away in the ring and also somebody again the other day. So I just don't like that talk because that's just stupid talk because I send people family years stuff like that. It's very upsetting and very discrediting boxing. So look, if he knocks me out, he knocks me out. That's the name we're in. If I knock him out, I knock him out. But, you know, keep the death situation away from it. That's the only thing I didn't like, which personally, myself, it don't hurt me. But, you know, I, I love boxing and it discredits boxing. So that's the only reason why, you know, I've got a little bit of a, uh, you know, I said he had short legs and whatnot else because uh, he said that, which I'm only stating the truth. He, he's got short legs. Right. David, and, uh, also, uh, people... David, my son, uh, my son's got some uh, size 22 jeans over, brought over for you for after the fight. Um, I've got them as a present here. Yeah? 22 inch legs. Can you talk in English? I don't understand the what you're saying. Okay. I got very nice jeans for you as a present. Good gesture, but they're very short in leg for you. And uh, also, funny, also, eh? bit of, also, champ, um, you you look to be in absolutely fantastic shape. Is it fair to say you're in the best physical condition you've ever been in before? Because people have really, really remarked on the way you look so ripped and you you just look in fantastic shape. Have you trained harder than ever before? Brother, listen, the, when I come to someone's backyard, right, I'm coming to somebody's back garden, Canada, I've, I'm flew over it. I'm never, never, ever going to leave a stone unturned. I am at my physical bestest shape I possibly can be in. There is no better Billy Joe Saunders turning up here on Saturday night, and I can guarantee that. So I hope David can do it, say the same. And our next question comes from Sean Cross from Fight City. Hi, how are you, gentlemen? Good, brother. Good. Uh, this question is for you, champ. Um, You've taken a lot of criticism from a lot of people that are saying that you're ducking Gennady Golovkin. In fact, I wasn't interested in asking the question, but I'm seeing it right now on my Twitter feed. So you've mentioned Canelo, but not Gennady. Would you like to uh, to comment on that? <laughs> Look, I know that uh, Golovkin and Canelo hold the ace card. They hold the ace card. I, I signed to fight Golovkin in June, so he passed up on the opportunity. Not that he was scared or frightened, that he had big business to do with Canelo. So, if them two are not fighting, it makes more sense now that me beating one of Oscar De La uh, boxers in Canada also gives me more of a chance to fight Canelo. So, um, you know, either one of them come along, but I would love to fight Canelo. Okay, thank you. And one question for David. David, have you altered your training at all in order to face Saunders or no? In other words, you're fighting a slickster this time. You're not, you know, fighting a Stevens or a Canelo or, or a Canelo or even a Triple G. You're facing somebody who's uh, a little more slippery. Have you altered your training at all? Well, of course, for every fighter, there's a new, uh, there's a new uh, planning. Um, I'm in the best shape of my career. Um, Come Saturday night, you guys watch what I'll do, and uh, you can you can judge by yourself. Okay, thanks a lot, and I wish you both the best. God bless you. Likewise. And our next question comes from Nicholas Martino from TV Sports. Ouais, salut David, la question est pour toi. Écoute, euh, j'aimerais que tu nous dises, est-ce que ça te fait d'avoir l'occasion de te battre pour la première fois à la place Belle? On sait que c'est ton patelin, ça fait faire différent évidemment du centre Belle. De quelle, de quelle façon tu vois euh, cet événement-là se, se dérouler pour toi? C'est une deuxième fois chez nous, euh, pas en face à Montréal, maintenant c'est vraiment dans, dans ma cour arrière euh, à Laval. Alors, euh, puis un premier gros, gros événement que je peux amener à un championnat du monde euh, ici dans, dans ma cour, c'est extrêmement, extrêmement, je suis extrêmement content et fier de ça, puis euh, d'amener le champion lui-même, euh, le coup de se battre euh, dans ma cour arrière, c'est aussi euh, une autre euh, belle chose qu'on qu qu peut, qu peut faire. Alors, euh, je suis très, très satisfait, puis... Euh, Samedi, si j'ai hâte à, à montrer ma performance. 
Je, euh, je veux te demander aussi, euh, David, euh, Billy Joe parle beaucoup des prochains adversaires qu'il pourrait affronter après le combat contre toi. J'ai l'impression que c'est, c'est un peu un manque de respect à ton égard de déjà parler des, des Golovkin et, et des autres euh, gros boxeurs chez les 160 livres. <rire> Billy Joe va avoir une méchante surprise samedi. Je pense qu'il il va affronter tous ces gars-là après moi. Il y a une grosse, grosse tâche devant lui euh, avec moi samedi, mais je ne sais rien, moi. Je suis, je, je suis euh, pied à terre. Euh, je suis concentré sur le, sur le combat de samedi, mais lui, il peut faire tout le blabla qu'il a, qu'il a besoin de faire. Ça va changer euh, au résultat de, de ce que je vais, je, je vais faire à lui samedi. Parfait. Merci, David. That's it for me. Thanks, uh, guys. Can um, Camille or David, can you please translate the question and um, David's response into English for the others on the call? Camille or David, are you able to translate the the question and response that was just given in French? Hello. Hello. David? Hello? 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 Camille? Camille and David, are you on? Yes, we're on. Can you hear us? Yes, you can. Can you um, translate into English the, the question and response that was just provided in French for the other callers on the line? Yes. Can you hear us? Yes, we can hear you. transition now to final comments. So, um, David, do you have any final comments you want to share with the media on the call today? Saturday night, I'm going to be the new world champion. <laughs> All right, thank you. Billy Joe, do you have any final comments you'd like to give? Lol, L-O-L. See you Saturday. God bless you all. All right, thank you to all the fighter teams and the media for joining today's call. Um, we will uh, see you on Saturday at Plus Bell for Saunders versus Lemieux. And uh, thank you all for joining. Have a great day. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes today's conference. Thank you for participating. You may-